In this video, we're going to give you a brief overview of the steps to create the model and toolpaths to make the teddy bear part that you can see on the screen. There is a companion tutorial to this that covers the same example, but in much more detail. So you may want to watch this first to get an overview of the process, and then if you're interested in following along, watch the other tutorial to get a better explanation of all the different steps. We'll begin here by starting a new copy of Aspire. I'm going to come down and click on the option to open an existing file and from the project folder I'm going to choose Barehead Vector and hit Open. This is a simple set of vectors that were drawn in Aspire. We're going to use these with a modelling tool called Create Shape. So I'm going to come down, click on the modelling tab. I'm just going to tile the window so we can see the 2D and the 3D view and I'm going to select the Create Shape function. This will let me choose vectors from within the 2D view and assign a profile to them in order to create a 3D shape. I'm going to quickly work through all the vectors here in order to create all the shapes I need and assign them a round profile and an angle to each one. For this first shape I'm going to assign an angle of 30 degrees. I'm going to choose all the other options set to zero for the base height, no limit for final height, no tilt, add and then I can put in a name for this component and hit apply and now you can see it's taken applied that round profile to that shape that I've got selected in order to build the dome which is the first part of my model. Now in order to create the subsequent parts I'm just going to click on the start new component button I'm going to select another vector I'm going to provide a slightly different angle for this one I'm going to change the name for this hit apply in order to create the next shape which is being added on to the one below it there. Click on start new component again and continue to work my way through this time selecting the nose. I'm going to enter a value of 60 degrees for this. Once more we'll give that a name and hit apply. Click on the start new component button. Do the same with the two vectors for the eyes here. So I'm going to set these to a 40 degree angle. Call that eyes and apply and start new component so we can see our 3D model taking shape we're able to very quickly work our way through selecting the vectors and assigning different profiles to them this time I want to select the mouth vector I'm going to set this to 50 degrees we'll give this a name mouth and hit apply but now I don't want this to raise up you can see that's adding on like the other shapes we've made I'd actually like that to go down into my part so I'm going to change the combine mode from add here to the next one which is subtract. When we do that you can see now in the 3D view that that shape is actually being taken away from all the ones that we've previously created. Again we can click on the start new component button. Now I'm going to come up and select the two vectors for the outer parts of the ear. I'm going to specify an angle of 35 degrees, set those to add and we'll call that ear outer, hit apply now in this case again we don't want these to add because of the way they overlap I would actually like them to blend with the surface of the face. I certainly don't want them to subtract though either so we're going to use the third combine mode option here which is to merge them. When I click on that you can see they're now blending into the shape rather than adding on top of it and so finally we can click on the start new component button we can select the two vectors for the inner part of the ear I'm going to go with 35 degrees again We'll call these ear inner and this time I'd like to subtract these in order to make a negative shape on top of my ear. Hit apply and we'll hit close at this point because we've now created all the components we need. We have one slight issue and that's where that last component overlaps with the face here it's also subtracting. What I'd actually like that to do is just work with the ear alone and for those two to then merge in with everything else. The way we achieve that is to take these two components and to group them together. If we just click to deselect the vectors, I'm going to select ear outer, shift and select ear inner, choose the group icon and now we can see that those two are basically being combined together before they're then combined with everything else above them. So within the group they have the combination to create the disc shape with the recessed area and then that is being merged in with everything else above here in the component tree to create the composite model. The composite model or what we see in the 3D view is what we're actually going to machine. 
Next we're going to adjust the Z scale of our model. So I'm going to click on the icon here to scale Z height. We can click set exact height. We could scale it down if we wanted. I can enter a value of 0.4 and hit apply. And you can see that that's just reduced down in height. Or I'm actually going to enter a value of 0.6 and hit apply. We can see that all scales up again. I can hit close on here and OK. Now at this stage we're almost ready to start calculating toolpaths but I need to define a vector that's going to represent the outside area to govern the shape that the toolpath is going to stay within. What I'm going to do is select these three vectors around the extents of my part, I'm going to right mouse click, copy to layer, new layer, I'm going to make that visible and active and hit OK and then on the layers tab I'm going to switch off layer 1 I'm going to come to the drawing tab and with those three vectors selected that we just made a copy of I'm going to click and weld them together to make a single vector that goes around the silhouette of the part. Now I'm going to click on the icon to go across to the toolpath tab. I'm going to set up the material to relate our part from within the software to how it's going to be set up on the machine. Here I'm going to set Z0 off the top of the block. Material thickness is three quarters of an inch. The datum I'm going to set to the lower left hand corner so my x, y, 0 position will be here when we set the part up and then I'm just going to move the part down slightly within the material so we'll set the gap above to just be 0.03 inches which means we have 0.12 inches of stock below our 3D model in this part. We can check the rapid and home position, hit OK and now we're ready with this vector selected to calculate the toolpaths. So I'm going to come in and click to choose the 3D roughing toolpath. I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill, uh, machining allowance, leave a little bit of thickness on the part, Z level rough, there's a boundary vector offset to force the tool to come past the edge here and we'll just call this 3D roughing bare, go ahead and hit calculate. Now we can preview that to see what that toolpath will actually look like when we machine it into our material. We're going to get a virtual rendering to show us what the different parameters we've chosen and that tool size will give us on this part. Now we can see that now in the 3D view, so that's the material we're going to hog away with our roughing toolpath which will leave this kind of stepped part you can see here. If we hit close now we're going to calculate the finishing toolpath. I'm going to use a 1 8 inch ball nose tool, I'm going to raster, come slightly past the edge of the part again, which give that a different name and hit calculate. This is going to calculate my finishing toolpath and again here in the preview mode I can click on the button and the software will actually animate that toolpath in our virtual piece of material and show you what the part will look like after we've run the finish cut on the machine. So there we can see the toolpath we've created and the effect of it and that's based on the size of the tool we chose and the parameters we entered into that toolpath form if I'm happy with the way that looks, which I am, looking at the 3D view here, then we're ready to calculate our cutout toolpath. So again we can hit close on the preview toolpath form. I'm going to come up to view, tile the window so I can see the 2D view and the 3D view. I can make sure this vector is still selected and I can click on the icon here to calculate a profile toolpath. We're going to cut all the way through the part with a quarter inch end mill going outside of that vector and in this case I want to add tabs to this to hold the part in place. So I'm going to check this box, click on the edit tabs button and click on the button to add tabs and then I'm going to click these within the 2D view and move them to the positions that I would actually like them to end up in when we cut the part out. Again I can hit close there, we'll call this profile bear cutout hit calculate, you can preview that and there if we maximize the 3D view we can see what our finished part will look like. Now we'd actually be ready if we wanted to close the preview form there to save these toolpaths and send them to the CNC machine. Click on them, hit on the save button, choose an appropriate post processor, click on the save button there, we'll be able to save that file put that across the network or on a memory stick and take it out and actually start to run these toolpaths in order to cut our part. So that's almost taken us to the conclusion of our overview of this project. As we mentioned at the start there is a companion tutorial which covers the same example in much more detail if you want to follow along to create your own version of the teddy bear. 
that concludes this video. Thanks for watching.